Today, we're gonna to be talking about frying pans. There are styles of cooking in the great outdoors that differ from one another. You can be the person with the cast iron pan, spatula from your home kitchen with a full-size bottle of olive oil or Tupperware bacon grease, which is fine, or the person who packs a 0.75 liter hard anodized aluminum pot that's ultralight and basically serves as a vessel to create hot water to pour into dehydrated backpacking meals, also fine. Me, I dabble in a little bit of everything, but sometimes you just wanna fry an egg and cook a little slice of ham after a long hike up that mountain worthy hill you just climbed. Day hikes are perfectly complemented with trail mix and apples, but sometimes I want a little bit more versatility when it comes to the lunch department, when you're out in the bush or on the trail for less than 24 hours and don't wanna bring that full size extended trip cookware set. So in order to accomplish this, I need a pan. And this certainly is a unicorn of a pan. There are very few cooking pans on the market that are actually nonstick for a no fuss cleanup and are light enough and small enough for day hike solo or with a plus one that can be nested with other parts of a pre-existing cook set. Keywords are small and teeny small is what I'm looking for. This pan needs to be small enough that I hardly know it's there in case I don't end up cooking and just eat my granola bar. I'm not saying that there aren't backpacking or camp frying pans out there on the market. In fact, there are loads of them and they're all basically clones of each other dressed up in the colors of their brandings, all toting their various proprietary forms of PFOA free patent pending nonstick coatings. To name a few, Sea to Summit makes the Alpha Pan, which is nonstick, hard anodized aluminum and stainless steel, and has an eight inch and 10 inch version retailing at 44.95 USD for the smaller. And Jet Boil's Summit Skillet is a set 8.5 ceramic coated nonstick aluminum pan in a beautiful orange color that you're bound to never say, where's my frying pan in the bush? And retails the same as Sea to Summit's Alpha. GSI makes the Pinnacle frying pan, again in the eight inch and 10 inch sizes. And as expected, it retails a bit less than Sea to Summit and Jet Boil at 34.95 USD. I did look at the MSR Quick Skillet as a contender for its weight or lack thereof, with it being the lightest of the bunch weighing at 5.9 ounces with its seven inch nonstick hard anodized aluminum surface with a Teflon pot handle, but with mixed reviews on longevity, long stick, uh, the nonstick consistency and literally spotty heat distribution, I didn't wanna take the gamble for the price, but who knows, I might give this one a try down the road, especially with its tempting ability to nest with the Quick 2 cook set. I also know there's a whole world of pans I'm not mentioning here. Amazon has a scary amount of identical looking nesting cook sets with nonstick pans that are sold from numerous seemingly nonsense named brands like Uzu and Odaland, Gonex, Meat Sun, and G for Free, just to name a few. I'm just not brave enough, folks. But if you're brave and you've tried one, I'd like to hear your story. You can let me know down in the comments. All in all, I have no qualms about the Sea to Summit or Pinnacle for an overnight, few days out on the trail, etc. It makes sense to bring a larger cooking surface, especially if you have a plus one and you're bringing a few days worth of food or a small pantry. Hello, canoe trips, that's a nod to you trail bullies. Um, but for those day hike adventures, I think I found my unicorn of a pan and I'm excited to share it with you. So let's jump right in. This little nugget is called the Trangia Mini Frying Pan, and this thing is small. I mean, really small. At just a hair under six inches in diameter, this thing feels more like a paint can lid than an object equipped to cook bacon in the backcountry. Now, I actually got this little guy as part of the Trangia Tundra 3 Mini Cook Set, which includes two saucepans that are two liters each, and a small lid to fit both saucepans, a handle plus a cover, and the frying pan itself. The Tundra 3 Mini retails at 4670 USD, which is less than what you'd pay for the Summit Skillet or the Alpha Pan alone. And you get this whole perfectly nested cook set, which is only 12 ounces and virtually disappears inside your day hike bag. For a little background on the company, Trangia is a line of alcohol burning portable stoves and cookware aimed at backpackers due to their durability and lightweight materials. The company began in 1925 selling cookware and the Trangia stove was developed by the 1950s. I haven't tried the full system, but it's definitely something on the horizon. And in the meantime, I've been pairing it with my Soto Windmaster and it's worked beautifully. 
You can actually get your hands on the pan only if you don't want the full cook set. Uh, Trangia makes replacement parts for its cook sets and that's actually how I was first introduced to this little pan. You can get your hands on the pan alone for just $8.88 uh, USD off their website or $12.63 off Amazon if you want to avoid the overseas shipping fees. I'll note that the pan included in the Tundra 3 Mini compared to the replacement pan does show some differences. The pan included in the Tundra 3 Mini cook set is about one inch in height and the replacement pan is seven eighths of an inch, so a bit shallower. I actually prefer the shallower pan, which is more of a contrast to all the other cooking pans in the market, which have higher edges, making liquids less likely to spill out, but harder for a person to get their little spatula flat to the bottom when flipping an egg. Um, there's also built-in divots on the replacement pan for what might be a preferred handle connection point that aren't present on the Tundra 3 Mini's included pan. Cool. So I think it's time that we jump into using the pan in action, shall we? All right. So now that we've made ourselves a tiny little camp set up here in the uh, Minnesota snow, Let's try frying an egg. Uh, ditch these gloves first so we can get a little better grip on what we're doing here. So, all right, so we've got the Soto Windmaster that we're going to be pairing this with here today. Uh, we'll light that up. And I've got a little bit of bacon grease I'm going to throw here in the pan and we'll uh, get that going so the eggs don't completely stick. Now, the directions that come along with the full kit I uh, do state that if you rub this with a little bit of oil, uh, either fat or oil, before you use it, uh, and then go out into the field and use it then, uh, nothing should stick to it. Um, if it does happen to burn dry, uh, you can always put a little oil or fat on it afterwards and get it back in, uh, back in gear. So let's uh, start by giving that a little bit of love. not a pro at cracking open eggs. I feel like I gotta spend some time with that up my game in the future. Please don't make fun of me for that. I've learned that you should never go anywhere without a tiny spatula if you have a tiny pan. Oh ho ho, that's pretty dang clean. Let's try the second egg here. First, a little bacon grease inside the pan with the egg this time. All in all, I've been impressed with this mini frying pan, and I'm stoked to continue to test it in the field. That's all for this one, folks. Thanks for the watch.